What is up VR lovers? So in a previous video, I had the pleasure to talk about VR Builder, a new asset which helps you to create your own VR game using a visual editing tool. And in the first part, I show you how to use it to create this mini escape VR game where we needed to grab a key and put it on the door handle to open it. But you guys seem to really like this video. So with Mindport, the maker of the asset, we decided to collaborate once again to give you another tutorial. But this time, I'm focusing on more advanced feature of the asset. So we will see how to create non-linear progression, manage advanced behavior sequence, use chapters, and more importantly, extend everything by codes. I hope you guys will enjoy this video as well and find it helpful. And if you do, please let me know by liking and subscribing to not miss the next tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we are back where we were left at the end of the first episode. Of course, it is better if you go watch it first to understand what is happening here. So the first thing that I want to do is open back the process editor so we can go to tools, VR builder, process editor. Now, what we did previously was to create a pretty simple succession of steps, grab the key, snap it to the door and open it. But we can actually go way further with this step system. So just to give you a quick example, let's see how we can handle some cycle of gameplay. In my case, I will create a little sphere in the scene windows next to the key we need to grab. And what I want to do is actually make an error message to say that we pick the wrong object if we grab it and highlight the key. To do this, I'm going to click on the plus button here. As you can see, this has added a new output node that we can use. So if we select this step, we have the step inspector opening and we can go to transition and add a condition. In our case, we want to select interaction, grab by reference. We can then drag the ball here. And because we have not added a grabbable property to be able to grab it, VR Builder is smart and awareness. So let's click on fix it. Next, we can say what happens if we grab the sphere. For this, I'm going to right click new step place it under and link the two step like this. Now with it, it means that if we grab the ball, it will go here instead. So we can give it its now custom behavior in this case, like adding a voice and highlighting the key, but even cooler, how can we sequence these two behavior to have one playing after the other? And yes, we can do this using the behavior sequence. So for this, let's click on add behavior, utility, behavior sequence, and we can combine this way multiple behavior. So let's play an audio first with add behavior, guidance, play audio from text and write that's not a key. Then to highlight the key after the audio has played, we can click again on add behavior. Guidance, highlight object, use a yellow color and drag here our key. Of course, we can still click on fix to add the highlight feature on the key. But the question is, what if you want a certain delay between these two and not just have one after the other? For this, you can actually click on add behavior, utility, delay. Now move it in the middle of the two other with this up arrow. And now let's say we want to wait one second uh, by writing just one here. So this will do the trick. And just like that, we made in a few seconds a custom and more advanced behavior. By the way, if we don't want to wait for this behavior sequence to end to go to the next step, we can simply here uncheck the wait for completion. And now we need to say uh, the transition to get out of this step. So the cleaner way to do this is to rewrite the grab key condition here. So let's click on transition, add condition, interaction, grab, reference, and drag our key once again here. And now we can simply link this step with the next one. And there it is. Now the setup is already done. Let's click on play to try what we made. You will never find the exit ahaha except if there is a key. And now as you can see, that's not a key. If I grab the wrong item, I get both our sequence behavior, but I can still continue with our game if I use the key that awesome. And just like that, congratulations, we've created a more advanced stepped 
gameplay. But of course, you can descend into madness and create more and more and more and more cycle reaction and interaction for your game. I really think that this visual tool make it easier to understand how to better design the interaction of your game. But of course, there comes a time where you might end up with something a bit messy. So to better organize your steps, you can use here the chapters. Now to create a new chapter, it's really easy. We can click here on add chapters. We can rename it by clicking on this edit icon. Let's call it next chapter, not the best name I know. And while we are at it, let's rename the base chapter to Blue Room. And using this, we can super easily go from one chapter by going to right clicking new and chapter and select new chapter. This will simply send us to this page instead, which is super handy. Now on the side note, if you don't see this end chapter, it might be because you are using a version below VR Builder 2.5. So be sure to update your package to at least 2.6 by going to Windows, Package Manager, search for VR Builder and update and download it here. Okay, so at this point, I guess we are starting to have a good understanding of the possibilities of this asset. But there is one thing left that for me is where the biggest strength of this tool is making our own behavior and transition. So let's see how we can do this by extending VR Builder by code. And with this tool, you will have all the power in your hand to do basically anything you want with this asset. So let's go. Okay, so what we will do is create a custom behavior that lerp a material from one color to another. Now, extending VR Builder by code is not complicated, but it is very important to follow a structure in your code. And this is what I'm going to show you. First, let's create a new script by clicking on the plus button here on the project windows. Click on C sharp script and I'm going to rename it a lerp color behavior. Okay, so let's double click on this script to open it. And the first thing we need is the namespace that we will use. So let's write using system.runtime.serialization, then using vrbuilder.core, then using vrbuilder.core.attributes, then using vrbuilder.core.behaviors, and finally using vrbuilder.core.sceneObject. Okay, for the structure of the script, the first thing we need is to build the parameter that we will use for the behavior in a separate class. So in my case, I will do lerp color data. It needs to extend the i behavior data. And by default, because we are extending the i behavior data, we at least need two parameters that VR Builder require. First, a metadata. So let's do metadata i data dot metadata get set. And then a name, so string i name data dot name get set. And then we can add our own parameters. So in my case, I will add a public color called start color, a public color called end color, a public float called duration, and finally a public game object called target. But this is very important. VR Builder will not allow you to directly put the game object parameter here. So if you are looking to use a reference to a game object in the scene, it is better to write scene object reference instead. Perfect. Now the next step is to make this data be serializable. So let's add at the top data contract is reference equals true. Then we can write bracket data member in front of our own parameters. Now we can even change the name that these parameters will display with bracket display name. And let's do this quick example for the target renderer by writing a target space renderer in the first one. Perfect. Now that it is basically it for the parameter of the behavior. But now the next step is to actually say what is going to happen when this behavior is playing. And for this, we need to define the stage process. So let's write another separate class. I will name mine lerp color activating process, a public class, of course. It needs to extend now the stage process lerp color data, which is the class that we just made. But as you can see, there is an error because again, we need to implement some basic VR builder functionalities for this script to work. So a cool technique to automatically fill this line is to click on the mistake, click on this little icon next to it and select implement the abstract class and ta-da, as you can see, this has filled here all of the base function that we needed. 
we have the start, which is called as the start of the behavior, the end, which is called at the end of the behavior, and the update, which is called every frame during the behavior. But there is still one thing missing that the class needs, and it's a constructor, which can be done by writing public lerp color activating process parentheses lerp color data base data. And now it's basically like we would with any script. So in the one that we are making, I will need two parameters. One is the renderer of the target object that I will call public renderer target renderer. And the other is a timer, so public float timer. But now in the start function, I can initialize everything with timer equals zero, target renderer equals data dot target dot value dot game object dot get component renderer and I can even set already the color of the renderer to start color with target renderer dot material dot color equals data dot start color. Okay, why we are at it? We can even use the end function to set the material to the end material this time with target renderer dot material dot color equals data dot end color. But with this, when the behavior start, it will change the color of our material to the start color. And when it will end, it will set it to the end color. But what is even cooler to do is to lure between these two colors during the behavior. And for this, we will use the update function just right there. And let's do while timer is less than data dot duration, float progress equals timer divided by data dot duration, then lerp the color with target renderer dot material dot color equals color dot lerp data dot start materials data dot end material, then progress. Finally, don't forget to update the timer with timer plus equals time dot delta time and just yield return null to wait for the next frame. There you go. And that's basically it. Just like this, we have defined the process of our behavior. Now what's left is to bring everything together in the lerp color behavior down below. So first, it needs to have at the top data contract is reference equals true and then override behavior lerp color data. Now it needs as well a constructor with public lerp color behavior and then the parameter of this behavior that we want when it first get shown. So in my case, I will do data dot duration equals one data dot start color equals color dot white data dot end color equals color dot black and finally data dot target equals new scene object reference and we can just give it an empty string as a parameter and finally we can call the activation process that we just made a few seconds earlier with public override i stage process get activating process and then return new lerp color activating process data. And there you go. Our behavior script is finished. We can save and go back to Unity. Now, if we go to our stage process and try to find our behavior, we will not be able to find it in the list. So to add it as an item in the behavior menu, there is one more step to do. First, we need to create a new script cool this time lerp color menu item. Now let's double click on it to open it. So in the script, we need to add two namespaces. First, using vrbuilder.core.behaviors and then using vrbuilder.editor.ui.stepinspector.menu. Then we can extend menu item i behavior again to fix the error. We can click on the little light bulb icon to implement the interface. And now for the display name, let's write get equals custom slash lerp color. This will show the behavior under a new menu called custom. Then for the get new item, let's write instead return new lerp color behavior. And there you go. Now, and if we save and go back to Unity, let's select a step in the step process. Let's say the door open. And if we go to behavior 
and create a new behavior, we can see our custom lerp color behavior showing right there. We can see our custom slash lerp color behavior showing right there. That's perfect. And if we select it, we add the two color, the duration, the target parameters, everything showing. So that's awesome. But to test this, I'm going to keep the start color to white. The end, I'm going to set the color to red. You can do anything you want, of course, and set the duration to one. And for the render, I'm going to simply drag the ground here for this one. I think its name is plain. Of course, we can click on fix it right here. And now it should color the ground when we put the key in the door handle, but only one way to find out. So let's click on play. And there you go, guys. As you can see, it works. That's just awesome. Now, when I put the key on the door handle, the ground turns slowly red. That is so cool. And it means it works. But of course, I know that this might seem like a lot of scripting to do just to change the color of something. But now that we know the basic structure of a behavior, you can basically copy it and just change the name and modify the stage process to create or sort of behavior. Now, another important thing is that all behavior that you see here are available in the project and you can have a look at what's inside by simply opening one of them. This is something super cool to understand how we can do more advanced stuff with it. But now what we made here is an extension of the behavior system. But of course, you can do the same for the transition system. And so if you guys are interested, I will leave a link to the documentation which explain this in the description down below. And I can even make a future tutorial about it if you'd like. Now, thank you for watching till the end. I hope that you are enjoying this video and thank you also to VR Builder for collaborating with me on this one. You can go in the description to find a link to their asset and they also have some really impressive add-on to even give more feature to this asset. So have a great day guys and see you soon. Bye bye.